is Ryan Cam, and welcome back to the 1999 Project. And oh boy, this this batch of movies this week just took a nose dive in quality. We went from Blair Wit, the Blair Witch Project, Muppets from Space, and Eyes Wide Shut to these three movies, two of which have been subject of videos by the Nostalgia Critic. Fun. Let's get all this over with, starting off with a Christopher Guest movie on steroids. It's Drop Dead Gorgeous. Drop Dead Gorgeous. Suck it in, or so help me, I shove my foot so far. Drop Dead Gorgeous was directed by Michael Patrick John, a man who has only directed one other movie in his career, a movie called Organ Trail. It's called Organ Trail trail i don't know what to do with this information and you don't know what to do with it either starred kristen dunst kirstie alley denise richards among others and it is a mockumentary about a very famous beauty pageant taking place in a very small town in minnesota and well this is basically all the town has like the little town of in of Hickory, Indiana, in the movie Hoosiers, like they have basketball. This town has this pageant. Pageant. It's the thing that everyone knows it for, and this is the fiftieth anniversary. And everyone that is competing for it is cutthroat about it. But one particular participant in the ceremonies is more cutthroat than others. Let's just say, I go into these ninety nine movies with. No expectations for the most part. For the most part, I usually don't know what I'm walking into, and I prefer that, unless I've seen the movie before. Like, for example, Blair Witch Project, which I had seen a few times beforehand. This movie, I didn't know what to expect. All that I did know was that Rachel, my friend from Rachel's Reviews, hates this movie with a burning passion. This is one of the only movies that she has ever walked out on. Read her review, and you will understand why. To accurately describe this movie is, like I said in the intro, a Christopher Guest movie on steroids. Christopher Guest directed movies like Waiting for Guffman, Best in Show, For Your Consideration, very much mockumentary style, like found footage but no horror. It involves very quirky people with sometimes exaggerated accents, doing very weird things that are weird to us, but to them are just things that they do in their daily lives. Drop Dead Gorgeous is a Christopher Guest movie, but instead of having a gritty edge, it has the edge of a katana sword with just the darkest humor that you can possibly think of. The humor in the movie is the best and the worst part of the movie. It makes the movie, it also breaks the movie. Really, in the grand scheme of things, your Likeability or hateability of this movie is really going to come down to your tolerance for dark comedy. If you don't like it, you're going to hate this movie. If you love it, you're going to love this movie. For me personally, I tend to walk into dark comedy and it's like, all right, let's see what happens here. And I got to give the movie credit. The movie made me laugh at some very distressing things, let's just say that. But at the same time, the movie also is so dark at times that I just have to go, why are you like this? This cast is loaded. You got Kristen Dunst a couple of years before she would become MJ in the Spider-Man trilogy from Sam Raimi. She is very good. Kirstie Alley is predictably funny as this very much trophy mom whose daughter, played by Denise Richards, is the odds-on favorite to win the whole thing. In the words of Allison Janney's character from this movie, anytime that family takes a shit, it's front page news. Speaking of Allison Janney, this is her second appearance in the 1999 project. She was the principal in 10 Things I Hate About You, and predictably, she is really funny. You also have Amy Adams in the movie, you have Supervisor O'Boyle from The King of Queens, he is in the movie too. This is a pretty good chunk of comedic actors, or well, not necessarily comedic actors, but actors who had done and would go on to do big things after this. Denise Richards just did a movie called Wild Things a year before this movie came out. Watch, 
watch the watch party that uh that Jay Collins and I and Stephanie from I'll Buy the Popcorn and Matt Wyatt did over on his channel, if you want more proof of that. So Denise Richards going from that movie being Wild Things to this, quite a range, that is what I will say. What I want to impress upon you, though, is that, like I said, your mileage is going to be very, very dependent on your tolerance of very dark humor. I'll give you a couple of examples without spoiling too much. There is a scene in which one of the contestants is doing the Hi, My Name Is, like, portion of the, it, of the documentary that this crew is making. She is very much involved with the rifle team, she is on the swim team, the cheerleading team, and she also lives on a farm. She is on a tractor, and she's like, you know, and all of these things, and she's telling her a life story, and, and she's like, Anthony Robbins once said that I am a winner, so I am a winner too, and as she says that, the tractor explodes. The very next scene, we see her funeral. Well, more accurately, her funeral reception, where... Kirstie Alley's character, through half-concealed tears, is like, We must go on with the pageant in her honor. I didn't want to laugh at this, but I did. There is also another scene in which the defending pageant champion is now living in the eating disorder ward of the local hospital. She is stick thin. I'm pretty sure Gollum looks like St Scott Steiner from 1999 compared to this poor girl. And... She is being visited by both Kirsten Dunst's character and Denise Richards' character, even though they probably have never seen her before in her life. So much so that the, that the pat that the former champion is like, "Who are you?" to Denise Richards' character, and Kirsten Dunst is like, "Well, I'm here all the time. I'm here like brushing her, and she goes to brush this poor girl's hair, and a clump of her hair just comes out of her out of her scalp." <laughs> I don't even. Wow. There are other scenes very similar to this where I just had to pick my job off the ground and just go, what in the blue hell were you people thinking? But I gotta give the movie credit, even though this movie is quite distasteful at times, I imagine that was the point. I'm going to give this a good rating because the movie made me laugh, but it also made me hate myself a little bit for laughing at it a bit too hard. If you like these kinds of movies, these very cynical, dark-humored kind of movies, then you're going to love this one. It's going to be just a, just gold for you. I can take or leave them. I can take this one, however, with the caveat of I feel guilty doing it. But now let us get into two undisputably worse films than Drop Dead Gorgeous, starting things off with The Haunting. None of this is real. Oh, it is real! <laughs> The Haunting was directed by Jan de Bont, the man behind Speed, among other things, and it is and it starred Liam Neeson, Catherine Zeta Jones, among others. And this is a remake of The Haunting from the 1960s and based off of the book The Haunting of Hill House. Yes, The Haunting of Hill House that was remade for Netflix by Mike Flanagan. It tells the story of a doctor played by Neeson who is conducting well, puts out in an advertisement that he is conducting a survey studying the causes of insomnia. And so he gets several people from all walks of life to come to this very deserted and very haunted house. And, well, think the haunted mansion, but anything that made that, that, made that ride at Disney World enjoyable. I have read and watched some very excoriating reviews of this movie, saying it's just awful. Now that I've actually seen the thing, I can confirm that the movie's bad, but it's not nearly as bad as I've seen some people say that it is. Credit where credit's due, the movie does actually look quite nice. The actual house in question, Hill House, is really, is really gothic looking, and I wish that they took advantage of it more. They don't, but I wish that they did. Speaking of the cast, talk about a group of people who were just brought on because of what they had done in previous roles. I'm pretty sure Neeson was brought on 
just because he was going to be in the Phantom Menace that same year. And I'm sure someone was like, hey, we got a Star Wars actor on, <laughs> on our movie set. And don't get me wrong, Neeson is not necessarily bad in the movie per se, but he just feels out of place. Same thing with Owen Wilson, who, like, if you are annoyed by Owen Wilson going, wow, then you are just going to hate this movie because he is in wow overdrive. There's Catherine Zeta-Jones's character who has precisely one thing on her mind at all times. I'm sure you know the thing I'm talking about. She is, well, she is a lesbian in this movie. And honestly, you could take or leave that kind of stuff in this movie. It's almost like, it's brought up sometimes, but it like it's not brought up to the point where I was just like, is this a plot point? Like, what is going on? I could safely say that if you hate this movie, I totally understand where you're coming from, and I would agree. I just think this is just plain boring, mediocre, and straight forgettable. It is not the worst horror remake I have ever seen. To quote Miracle Max from The Princess Bride, I've seen worse. I've actually seen worse fairly recently. Let's rip the band-aid off, it's Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Disney's Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget is a movie that is just awful. <laughs> I don't even know, like, what I can say to properly convey my just, not hatred, but just annoyance at this movie's existence. This was directed by David Kellogg. It is based on the cartoon show from the 80s. It starred Matthew Broderick. I'm really struggling with this because it's, honestly, it's just bad. It really is. This movie, for context, is 78 minutes long. It's not even an hour and a half. And it still feels like forever. This movie suffers from one very, very crucial sin. It is not funny. They try to make it funny, but it just, it's like fetch from Mean Girls. You can try to make it a thing, but it's never going to happen. This movie tries to be funny, and it never works. I saw a Letterboxd review that described this movie as Disney Channel's version of RoboCop, and my god, they were on the money with that one. But while RoboCop was smart, insightful, and had, and and had Peter Weller in a robot suit killing people, this movie has Matthew Broderick existing. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate Matthew Broderick as an actor. He has done some good work, but he is hilariously miscast in this. I don't know who could have played, played a role like this, but it just was not meant to be with him. Then you got Rupert Everett as Craw, or Craw, Claw, you see what this movie's doing to my vocabulary? As Claw, and just, again, talk about another miscasting. And Rupert Everett is normally very good. But just, I was just sitting there like, you're basically Blofeld from James Bond, even down to stroking the cat. And no, not in the way that I just mentioned it. He's literally like petting a cat throughout the first times that we see him in the movie. I want to paint a picture for all of you just how unfunny this movie is. There is a scene. There is a scene in which Claw finds the technology that he needs, the gadget program. He kidnaps it, shoots the scientist that created it in the head with a robot carrying a gun. Yeah, this is a Disney movie, folks. The robot gets away, and then Inspector Gadget chases after him. Broderick flips his car, and from his car yells, You better stop that limo! thinking to myself, yes, because they can clearly hear you in that limo as it is driving by. And then the car, Inspector Gadget's car, crashes into a telephone pole. The telephone pole then keels over, knocking over a sign with a big old advertisement for Yahoo, because there was no better way to announce that this movie was made in 1999 than having a big old Yahoo sign. Not to mention that there is a Yahoo, like a Yahoo! That, there is a Yahoo noise that crashes down on the limo. 
And then Inspector Gadget grabs a megaphone. It's like, step out of the vehicle. I'm like, dude, you you must have a concussion. And then... And then Claw lights a cigar, but the cigar is a bomb. And throws the cigar bomb. And then... And then just... And then the car explodes. And the next thing you know, Gadget... Gadget's car explodes. And then a bowling ball gets launched into the air, which flies through the sunroof of Claw's limo and lands on his hand, crushing Claw's hand, which is why he has the Claw hand. I can eat more marijuana than anybody in the world! Do I even need to give this movie a rating? I mean, it's horrid. I mean, come on, what are we even doing here? And I don't mean to dogpile, but just... Oh my god, watching this was torture. What did you all... What did you all think of any of the movies I talked about? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to read what you have to say. My name is Ryan Cam, and don't watch Inspector Gadget.